this short video, what I'm going to show you is four different scenarios where you can take a single pole double throw relay. All of them are using the five pan single pole double throw style relays. If you're using a single pole single throw, that's okay too because a lot of them you'll notice that the 87A uh, pin here is omitted. So you could actually use this with either a single pole single throw or a double throw. In some applications that you're going to want to utilize a relay will be like this one here we'll start out with which is basically taking a negative input to a positive output. So let's just say if you had a car alarm on the auxiliary channel and you wanted to use that to pop your trunk, which is takes positive trigger, say approximately 10 amps to, to throw the motor to open up your power trunk, for instance, right? Now, your negative output, which would be your alarm's auxiliary channel output, which would be here, that would go to pin 85, which is on one side of the coil. The opposing side of the, of the coil would have to be the opposing polarity, of course, to trigger the coil to the relay's armature. So what you're going to want to do here is have your 85 signal coming in negative, which is going to be most likely a 200 milliamp output, which is 200 milliamps equals one-fifth of an amp. So that's, to put it mildly, a small transistorized output from, the, from this unit generating it, which is going to since opposing polarity causing pin 30 common to connect to 87. So although it's showing I have the same high amperage constant 12 volt power here does not mean that you need it here for 86. You only need it for 87 because when you click the coil it's just going to connect 80 whatever's on 87 to 30 out. So you have a negative coming in it's going to cause 87 to connect 30. So you have a negative in you have power on 87 and it's going to throw that power right from 87 directly to 30 when the relay clicks. So that's what this relay scenario here is all about. Now if you had a similar situation but you have an accessory which requires a strong ground output here, all you're doing is a complete opposite of what this first relay scenario is. You're taking a positive input and you're triggering it to the coil here making ground contact to pin 30. So you have a positive signal coming into the relay coil and you have a ground coming out. So whatever the impedance and strength of the ground on 87 is what you're going to have on 30. So basically the mirror opposite of what we're doing over here into a, a straight up super strong constant 12 volt output on the 30. So similar but a little different but more or less you get the gist of it. Now over here you have changing the small amperage output, positive output, to a stronger positive output. Okay so in this case you have a weak 12 volt output, which could be, say, maybe a half of an amp, 500 milliamps, for instance. Putting that on one side of the coil, ground to click the relay coil. Now, you have, over here, you have a strong power source on 12 volts on 87 to throw it out on 30. So, in this case, you have an output, but you, it's not quite strong enough to switch the accessory, so you need it to be more stronger. So, you want to beef it up using the relay. That's all you're doing. You're taking it, putting it to 85, letting the relay do the work, and you're letting it switch a strong 12 volts from 87 to 30, boom, there you go. Now over here, it's the complete opposite of that, just using a different output style. Instead of having a weak positive signal output, you're doing a low ne negative ground. So you may have a very weak um, negative ground signal. You want to put that to 85, opp opposite or opposing polarity on the other side of the quill on 86, which is constant, of course, because it's, if there's no power here, whenever you're using the accessory to trigger pin 85. If there's not uh, power on 86, it'll never work. So keep that in mind. So negative input here, which is a weak, say a 200 or 100 milliamp signal. You have a strong ground on 87, and it's going to throw that strong ground right out to 30. And that's what's going on here. So you have some pretty neat, simple s situations here. All unique, all very important. Um, never use weak or transistorized outputs to trigger high amperage applications. That's really the moral of what this is all about. So you get a negative to a positive output. Over here you have a positive converting it to a negative. So that's relay inverters essentially. And over here you just have positive in, positive out, negative in, negative out. Not too bad. Relays are such wonderful little tools, aren't they? Just love them.